Hey everybody, Fox here. I was just washing my hands and I discovered a really cool trick. I can bend water using a comb. I don't even have to touch the water. Watch. So was that magic? Am I a wizard? Nope. It's actually science, and it's something that you can try at home. All you need is a comb, a faucet, and some static electricity. To learn about static electricity, we have to start small. I want you to think of the smallest things that you know. Fleas, dust particles, germs, no, even smaller. We're talking about these things called atoms. Atoms build up all matter, like me, or coffee mugs cars, clouds, and air, the moon, flowers, cats, dogs, this guy, or you. All of the matter around us is made of atoms. Can I show you a single one? Let's try it. Nope. These atoms are so small that they don't really interact with light which means we're not going to be able to see them with our eyes. Now, as small as they are, there's something even smaller inside of them that gives us our static electricity. An atom looks something like this, and they are made of stuff called protons and electrons. Protons make up the nucleus in the center, and electrons are outside of that. We like to say that protons are positively charged, and electrons are negatively charged. When there's an equal number of both, the whole atom itself is neutral. Let's see what happens if the atom rubs against another atom. Some of its electrons might move off onto the other atom, or it might take some of the electrons instead. The atom is no longer neutral because it has a different number of protons and electrons. Now it is either positively charged, for having more protons, or negatively charged, for having more electrons. Let's check it out. If I take this balloon and rub it on my totally not fake hair, like this, we're causing electrons to move around. The balloon takes on a positive or negative charge, and my luxurious hair takes on the opposite. There is a difference between electricity and magnetism, but I can use these magnets to model what's going on. Positive and positive will push each other away. Same goes for negative and negative. However, if we go positive and negative, opposite sides, they will attract and come together. Since there are two different charges between my hair and the balloon, the atoms that make up my hair try to follow it. Let's check out the faucet again. Water is matter, which means it's made of atoms. And each of those atoms has protons and electrons. If I comb my glorious and realistic hair, the atoms in the comb are losing or gaining electrons. Let's say that the atoms in this comb are now negatively charged. If I bring that comb close to the water, just like this, the electrons in the water atoms are repelled by the negatively charged comb, and the protons are drawn towards it. This makes the stream of water bend. By the way, if you ever feel a small shock while playing with static electricity, that's what we call a static discharge. It's when the electrons flow from a negatively charged atom to a positively charged atom, and both atoms return to their neutral, normal state. Since this is an electric current, you might feel a small shock, hear a faint crackling sound, and you might even see a tiny spark. These static discharges aren't dangerous on such a small scale, so feel free to play around. You can try these activities at home. There's another activity that's kind of hard to see on camera, but still worth trying. Get a cotton or fleece blanket, turn off the lights, and run your hand over it a bunch of times. You should see a really cool display of sparks. Thanks for watching this shocking edition of Spark of Science. Have a great day.